We are now going to discuss about the Riemann integral and that is part 1 and part 2 essentially talks about improper integrals, but I just called it Riemann integral 2 because when you talk about Riemann integral you are not really in the truly in the domain of just what you call calculus, it is slightly advanced calculus other I would say it is called mathematical analysis, you are taking a very deeper look into the issues of calculus. So, my idea is not to give a very deep mathematical idea or very you know rigorous idea of what is Riemann integral, but I would just like to tell you that uh, this was an idea which was quite important in those times in the 19th century, where you move forward from the idea of just integrating continuous functions to the idea of integrating bounded functions and it was. introduced by Bernhard Riemann, one of the greatest mathematicians of all times. Now, uh, sorry Bernhard HRD, I do not know whether I am writing his names, but I think it is the correct spelling. So, what was his idea? His idea was pretty simple. That suppose I just have a look if you observe a curve like the uh, continuous function you know how to find the area you already have studied in school, but now suppose I have a function like this which is here and then it is discontinuous it is from here it is here and then I am trying to find the area between this point A and this point B. Do they have an area? Do we can we define an area under this curve? You might feel okay, slightly problematic at this end point, but I would say why bother? Uh, just compute the area of this rectangular zone and just compute the area of this, which can also be easily computed, or you can also take a rectangular. So, you, 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 for example, in electrical engineering, what you have is step functions, functions is which is something to do with switching circuits, it is called heave side step function. So, do they have an area? Observe that if I want to find the area from A to B, they, they would, they would, I would really can easily define an area under this curve by just computing out the area of these rectangles. See the idea is interesting in the sense now if a function is bounded Riemann said that you can extend the concept of Newton's integration from continuous functions to bounded functions because every bounded function need not be continuous because here we see that these two functions are bounded functions but discontinuous at several points. So, how do I look at such a function? Okay, let me make a drawing. So, Riemann's vision was the following that let us just take this curve, the graph of a bounded function, let us just for just take we take one discontinuity. So, the discontinuity of the function does not have any, sorry, I will just make it much more easy. Just so, the function comes up, up to here, but does not have any value on at this point, which is C. So, how do I start integrating? What we do is let us forget this C point for the time being at the c the value is this. So, there is a discontinuity, but the function is bounded. What we do is let us divide the integ this whole line a b into some equal equ partitions of equal length or may not be equal length, but okay, does not matter. 
So, this is say x 1. So, a I put as x 0 is x 1, x 2, x 3 and dot 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 x i and so and so this x n. So, what we are doing? We are drawing rectangles, so, we are just joining up and drawing one set of rectangles, just, just joining up with the upper part of the graph. Okay, I will let me draw the partition just slightly clearly. these are my partition points. So, what Riemann did was okay, said okay, okay, the function is bounded. So, whichever partition I take say I take this partition, the function has a maximum value and a minimum value. Here the minimum value is obtained at a. So, taking this height as f a draw a rectangle. The same case you do with the point x 1. So, if the minimum value is x 1 the function here is increasing. But here the minimum value is also the function is increasing. So, you take it here. Here also it is increasing, you take it up. So, you take the minimum values here, 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 and here. So, now you take the minimum value over that interval, take it as the height of the rectangle and with the base as a length of the interval, compute the area of the rectangle. So, if you sum of that area, so what I am doing, I am taking for each interval m k as the infimum, it is obviously, it is achieved because of uh, here the function is bounded. So, it is the infimum of f x, when x is lying between you can okay just for the heck of computing on it just for the simplicity put m k to be between x k minus 1 and x k. You can take the otherwise also shift it you can take between x k plus 1 and x k uh, that also you can take as x m k and then you, the, the writing would be slightly simpler if you do this that is not a very big issue. Similarly, if you look at the supremum you can actually construct rectangles with the supremums. So, now what you can do, you can you with the small ones, you this is the area of the kth partition actually. Oh, we have taken x 0 right. So, x 0 means I have to take m k in this form x 0 is a. So, taking the whole thing for the kth partition, now you sum this up for k is equal to 0 to n. Now, this one is called the lower Riemann sum, actually it is called the lower Darview sum of f under a partition pi, where pi is the partition a is equal to x 0, x 1, x 2. So, the n point, point so one points, so there are n intervals actually. So, I should start from k equal to 1, then it will give you x 0, x 1 minus x 0 and m 1. So, if you take 1 here, so k can be starting from 1 to n, if you take k 1, so it is is the infimum between when x is in between x 0 and x 1. So, that is the thing. So, this is called the lower Riemann sum Similarly, you can construct the upper Riemann sum. So, if you write m k as the supremum of f x between when x is lying between x k minus 1 and x k. Then, 
you can similarly compute what is called the upper Riemann sum or u f phi pi is this partition pi is called the partition and then if once you construct this sum this will become say k equal to 1 to m m k x k minus x k minus 1. I do not want to leave this page because uh, you finally have to understand things here. So, I just rub this off and talk to you. So, what I what I have now done? If you look at the picture, the actual area of the actual area under the curve is sandwiched between this area the upper Riemann sum of the and the lower Riemann sum. So, the actual area if we call it the integral if I call it the integral which we will call the Riemann integral very soon is for any given partition pi Okay, this inequality might be strict. Now, suppose we take the supremum of L f pi for all possible partitions pi and we take the infimum of the upper Riemann sum for all possible partitions pi. When I say pi, it may over this supremum over pi means all possible partitions. So, the countably just the infinite possible partitions, partition in this way, partition this one partition that that you can have any other partition. There can be any 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 uh, many many ways of part, infinite ways of partition, countable infinite way. This is one way of partition. There then the second way of partition, the third way of partition, and just can go on. Countably infinite ways of partition, and then I just take, I'll make the I'll partition in such a way that I'll make the interval lengths that is x i and x x i minus 1 and x i or x k minus 1 and x k this interval length is made smaller and smaller and smaller. So, if I call this interval length as delta x k then I will make delta x k go towards 0. I will make it smaller and smaller and smaller and then I will see what is the supremum L p f and so what happens to this. Of course, if you if just if you look at this inequality then it will always be like this but if if supremum of pi l f pi is equal to infimum of pi u f pi then we say then we say the Riemann integral exists and infimum of u f pi for all partition pi and supremum of L f pi for all partitions pi is actually called the integral of a to b from f x d x and this integral is called the Riemann integral. So, we will not go to too much of a discussion on Riemann integrability. So, let us tell you what sort of functions are Riemann integrable. Every continuous function on a b is Riemann integrable. So, any function for which a Riemann integral exists we call it Riemann integrable. Now, take every and now the interesting fact what we have just seen that we have done this game with a discontinuous function at just as one point of discontinuity. So, if f is bounded on a b and has 
only finite number of discontinuities. Then f is Riemann integrable. Is there any function bounded, but not Riemann integrable? This function was handed over to Riemann by his thesis supervisor Dirichile and this is the famous Dirichile function we have already spoken about earlier. The f x is equal to 1 when x is rational that is x is in the set q and is equal to 0 when x is not a rational number when it is a irrational number. Now, I want to integrate it. Now, let me see I will partition it. So, I will partition. So, let me partition it just do it between 0 and 1. So, I want to ask what happens to this for this particular function. Of course, this is a bounded function the values are only 0 and 1. Now, if I partition it whatever be my partition because they always you know, infinite number of rational in an infinite number of irrational numbers inside those partitions my upper Riemann sum it does not matter for any whatever oh sorry whatever be the partition pi my upper Riemann sum u f pi is nothing but 1 into summation delta x i over i equal to or delta x k or k equal to 1 to n. So, when you the if you sum of the partition it will give you b minus a, but when you take the lower partition it will be always 0 into delta x k. is 0. So, if you take the infimum of the lower Riemann sum, the upper Riemann sum for all possible partitions for all pi, pi is not the real pi. Okay. If you are un uncomfortable, I will just put this partition as pi hat like this. Maybe people want to do not want to confuse it with actual uh, partitions an actual pi the number, but it is 0. So, this is always b minus a and this is the supremum of L f pi is always 0 for taken over any pi all possible pi's. So, what, what happens that because b minus a is strictly bigger than 0 here the b it is b minus a basically here b is 1 and a is 0. So, this is 1. So, they are not equal. So, this implies that 0 to 1 f x d x is not Riemann integrable. I will just mention one or two more properties of Riemann integrability. So, if something like that if f t is less than equal to g t for all t element of a b where each a f and g are Riemann integrable. So, we just write for short r integrable both of them then you will have that integral a to b f t d t is less than equal to integral a to b g t d t where both a and b f and g are sorry uh, two functions which are bounded and has this property. And also you will have the property which is a consequence of this is the following property. This happens because f of x it does not matter whether it is plus or minus is always less than modulus of f x. 
So, if f is a bounded function then mod f is a bounded function so, and if f is integrable then mod f is also integrable. So, and that is why this happens. So, with this very little ideas all, all other things like happens for continuous function the summing up of two functions and integrating the sum is, is same as integrating the function separately and summing them up those sort of things remain same for all those properties remain same in, in total like the ones you have learnt for continuous function even in high school. So, with this very simple ideas here and with this very simple way of looking at how to integrate functions which are not even continuous and just bounded we stop our discussion of the Riemann integral part 1. And in part 2 we are going to talk about something called improper integral where one of these b or a are points where, where b could be just infinity or one of these uh, points are such that the function is not defined at that point. We will just go into that in 5 minutes in, uh, in the next uh, lecture. Mm -hmm.